As we approach the dying days of the first half of 2017, the price of oil has had its worst first half percentage fall since the late 1990s. Brent is down in excess of 20% on concerns about a global supply glut. The FTSE 350 Oil and Gas Producers Index is down 11% and the oil services sector down 28% over the same period. So a return of almost 7% in the sector looks good. That's the return of the oil bucket list put together by Malcolm Graham Wood. Malcolm writes Malky's blog and he joins us now with uh, some more of this. And we talk to you every uh, so often about this and you had a, a wonderful year last year. And as I said, you've returned 7% in this first half against the backdrop of a very weak market. Appraise what's gone on. Uh, well, since the, the 1st of February, when the bucket list is down, the oil price is down almost exactly 30%. Ironically, the bucket list came out almost the, to the day that the oil price peaked. And if you look at last year, ironically, that was the day that the oil price troughed. And so it's not surprising to see uh, some very wayward movements. Uh, and in fact, looking at the list of stocks, I mean, they are go from being you know up 60 or 70 or 80 percent to being down that. Um, some of that is down to uh, to changes in uh, in the in the in the portfolios, or success or otherwise of of their drilling campaigns, but uh, mainly down to the oil price and the and the concerns that investors have in smaller oils. Yeah, I want to pick up on on <coughs> one of them, which in fact appears as a starred name in, on our list there because it's Ithaca, which is now out of the index, isn't it? Uh, yeah. It was up 13.5 percent actually when it came out. Uh, this is on a takeover. Explain what's happened. Well, uh, Ithaca was the star performer last year. It was up 600 percent nearly, and uh, so the, mar the market obviously knew that something was happening. Uh, and they were bid for at the beginning of the year, and as of the beginning of June, they they've disappeared. Uh, so that leaves a space. So at the end of after six months, I'll be replacing them. Uh, with another stock, um, and I'll probably move Bolivar out of the market as well. We'll come back to that in a minute, but they're effectively in runoff at the moment. So um, we may have a couple of changes. I try not to change the index if I can help it. The reason, you know, it's called a bucket list is that it's got a bit of everything in it, and we expect things to have good and bad times. Yeah. Let's let's pick up on on <coughs> Bolivar, um, another stock you've got coverage on, up 8.3 percent, I think, since the 1st of January. As you said, you. This bucket list is put together on the 1st of Feb, but since the 1st yep. of January, it's up 8.3%. Uh, Bo Levin. Bo Levin uh, was in the process of uh, selling off a couple of its assets anyway, and then uh, some uh, in investors came in and decided to effectively close the business down. Uh, they've got rid of all the management, and uh, I call it in runoff. Uh, they've sold off part of their business to, um, uh, <clears throat> to Victoria Oil and Gas, uh, and so it's no longer really... Um, Something that you, it, it, it's appropriate to be in the the bucket list. So mm -hmm. I've got, I've got a sort of wait list of uh, three, two or three reserves to come in, uh, and they'll come in as and when it's uh, the the right time occurs. Any time in the next few weeks, I thought. Yeah, um, Victoria Oil and Gas. You mentioned uh, another one that's uh, certainly worth watching. In fact, has uh, has <coughs> moved from the first of January up. I think around about twenty percent. Yeah, the stock is up 25% um, and had been up a huge amount more beforehand. Um, the market have got a little bit concerned about this. They're expecting uh, results from their uh, the gas uh, drilling in, uh, in Cameroon, in West Africa. Fun enough, I went to visit this company a few weeks ago and everything is going very well indeed. This is one with, with despite being up 25% against a falling market, will... Um, you know, I, I seem to remember saying before when they were sort of 60p uh, that they would be cheap even sort of four times of that. I think the valuation is 200p or, or could be more. Uh, but people forget about this. They put it in with all the oils. And in fact, it's a gas utility, really. Mm. It, it, it drills for gas. It builds the pipelines. It sells it into a market which is massively short of gas. So in Douala, which is the second city but the biggest city in Cameroon, uh, could take uh, 10 million scuffs of cubic uh, cubic meters of gas a day, uh, and they will sell them as much as they can get out. Don't forget, they have bought, as I said, the one a bit of acreage from uh, Bolivian in Bomone. And once that gas comes on, they'll be able to get to the other end of Douala. Um, you know, a lot of these African states have discovered that uh, generating electricity is best done through natural gas, which they have themselves, um, not the previous way of doing it with diesel and fuel and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So cleaner and cheaper. 
Yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, Ithaca doing very well last year and, of course, with 13% this year. Hurricane Energy is one I want to pick up on next. Now, this is down 29% this year, but we must look at that in the context of its stellar performance last year. Yes. I mean, they've, they've, they've spent the last uh, two years drilling successfully. Every single well they drilled came in. And they've got a massive amount of, of oil underneath their uh, their acreage in a number of different uh, wells, which like Lancaster, is, uh, which they're going to develop st uh, straight away. Now, I think the there are two reasons for the market uh, knocking Hurricane a bit. First of all, you know, they're fully aware that um, and uh, they were uh, the shells were told at the capital markets there a couple of months ago that there would be a need to develop this. The early stage development of Lancaster, called the EPS, is going to cost $400 million. And you go, don't go finding oil without then having to develop it. So the market have got the heebie-jeebies about uh, a potential fundraise. There will be a fundraise, but it won't just be the equity market they go to. I'm expecting possible farm out and some debt as well. So I don't think it's the end of the world. I think uh, at this price, Hurricane is one of the cheapest stocks in the market. I think the, the asset value of this stock is way, way in excess of the current market price, and patients will be rewarded. Yeah, 36 pence is what you pick those shares up for at the moment. Um, sound Energy, we've spoken a lot about Sound Energy, and of course mm. Sound Oil as it was, and a lot about what James Parsons and the team are doing um, at, the, at the company. And I know that they're still waiting on some good results, but in fact it's a company which has performed very well. Yeah, I mean it's already up 10% this year, uh, which is extremely good. Um, and um, it's a really crucial couple of weeks for, for sound as it happens. Uh, their existing uh, stuff in, uh, in Morocco called Tendrara is being tested at the moment, but actually the excitement is, is in a different part of Morocco where they're drilling uh, two wells in a place called Sidi Mokhtar. I'm expecting news from that soon. But the real so Cherry is, uh, is going to be a thing called Badile. And you and I have sp spoken about Badile for several years. Because it's in Italy, it's taken a, a very, very long time to drill. But they're drilling at the moment. I'm expecting news any time soon. The very preliminary news there was when they went through the cap of the reservoir and they did have a big gas flow. That means nothing, but it is encouraging. But it means nothing in the sense that it may just be a little bit of gas at the top. So we're waiting for news from uh, Badile. Uh, if that comes in, I've got uh, 50p a share. Well, obviously, won't add 50p a share to the share price, um, but it would be extremely useful for sound. Yeah. Uh, one of the other projects that James is working on, which is not on your list, is Echo Energy. I've he I'm hearing mm. more and more about this morning. Does that begin to attract you? It looks very exciting. It will probably go into the bucket list at some stage because uh, it's got a strategy of going into gas in South America and Latin America gas uh, where they already have infrastructure and pipelines and significant demand uh, but where a few years ago the big the majors walked away from uh, is a very very opportunistic move. Um, the management of, uh, of, of ECHO has been built up very rapidly and they've uh, got a brand new CEO called Fiona Makale starting uh, on the 5th of July. Um, they've just appointed a finance director. Uh, VP of exploration is first rate. Um, they've announced their first deal, which is a, a move into Bolivia. Um, very exciting. I mean, the share price has come back a wee bit, but uh, these things moves around you know, big ways at the moment. Uh, I fancy e Echo to have a go. Mm. Probably got the same sort of shell the list as uh, Sound. Yeah, indeed. Um, let's let's move on to um, an old timer in the sector, Premier Oil, Premier Oil and Gas. Yeah. In fact, I think it's probably one of the largest stocks in this list, isn't it? Yeah, and it still is. And uh, sometimes I wonder why I keep it in the list. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but and the reason for not having it in the list, of course, would be it's two and a half billion of debt. Um, but actually, they have sorted out the debt over the last few months. And the reason I've got it there now is that uh, there are two or three. Uh, big time assets, which uh, I'm expecting them to farm out. Uh, they made uh, a super acquisition a little while ago, uh, which has given them a gas field in the southern North Sea called Toll Mount, which is way better than they expected it to be. So I'm expecting that to go and either to farm out or to find s some sort of partner for Sea Lion, which is a development in the, uh, in the Falklands, uh, which at long last is probably only a, um, maybe a year, if maybe less, to sanction. Yeah, talking about the Falklands, uh, Rock Hopper Exploration is on the list. We've got to talk yep. about this again. Um, I think actually, if you look at the uh, numbers there, we've got a drop of 5.8%. But uh, I mean, this is a share which is trading at 20.9 pence. This was almost four pounds a share, wasn't it? Five yeah, years ago? and I mean, uh, last year, as I explained in the uh, in the sort of rhetoric for the blog in February. 
Um, it, it is completely dependent upon what Premier does um, because it's it's got a much bigger exposure to sea lion. Um, <clears throat> and at the moment, they're sort of just moving on with the, uh, the feed developments and so on for sea lion. And when that happens, the shares will you know, recover in a big way. In the meantime, actually, what is probably not known particularly well is that Rock Opera are building quite a nice portfolio in what they call the Greater Mediterranean, mm -hmm. and has been involved in Egypt in particular, where they've had a couple of quite good discoveries. Um, so all that GNA costs are actually paid for now by incoming revenues, uh, and there's a potential down the line for sea, li sea lion. Um, this so, is a so slow burner, but... Um, yeah, so what's in the share price at 20 pence, then? Which asset is, is representative of this 20 pence Well, share? I mean, the, the, the reason it's 20 pence, not 80 or 100p, is that people are not convinced yet that sea lion will go, yeah. because sea lion will be worth a pound a share of anybody's money if it goes ahead. When you see the market getting the jitters because of the oil price, and therefore potentially less people investing in it, um, the, the market's not prepared to give it a go. But uh, I would say that, you know, Underlying basis, rock opera is extraordinarily cheap at this level, yeah. and you know it may not happen straight away, but it will happen at some stage. Uh, let's move on to Ferro, another one you've been covering for a couple of years. Yeah, Ferro is probably the new blue chip, sort of blue-eyed boy in the in the sector that's probably taken over from Ithaca. Ferro is is very well run. It's North Sea, but primarily Norwegian North Sea. Uh, so it's uh, very tax efficient dollars it's uh, it's earning it's probably got one of the best exploration departments in the in the sector as i say it's very well managed it's strongly financed um and you know if you were to pick out one stock for in terms of quality management financing and acreage uh it would probably be faro i would have no hesitation in recommending this stock at the moment um you know there's there's plenty more to come they just had some good news the other day. One of a couple of their big developments uh, have got the go ahead, uh, and as I say, very Norway face, which is uh, extremely good news for the longer term. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ameriso, another one on your list uh, again. Another one we've spoken about before. Yeah, this has fallen uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, this is Colombia, uh, and again, I visited them uh, just before the end of the year, and uh, people are a little concerned that it's taking a while to build up um, production here. Uh, because they've got this OBA pipeline and uh, they've only got 5,000 barrels a day going through it at the moment. Um, but I'm expecting that to increase dramatically. Uh, and there's two reasons for that. First of all, uh, they've just uh, they've continued to have drilling success in Platanillo, which is the area at the south of Colombia where uh, nearest to the pipeline. Um, but they've also had a, a potentially really substantial uh, discovery in the north of the country with ONGC. Um, this could be, you know, th this could be a really big discovery, uh, certainly bigger than anything they've got at the moment, uh, and would produce enough revenue to easily see their sh short-term performance of 7,500 barrels a day and their longer-term production of 20,000 a day will be, uh, will be sorted out by this. So, you know, short-term the market have got the jitters about it. There's no reason to. Uh, it's very well run by John Wardle in Colombia uh, and the team over here, and I'd be... Um, I'd be very happy to continue recommending America. Yeah, another another one that's uh, disappointed the the bucket list uh, this year is Pantheon. Last year, I mean, it outshone, I think, in all all respects. I think, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, they've had a really difficult um, operational time in the first half of this year. And when I say operational, meaning literally. Uh, at the wellhead where they've had all sorts of problems with drilling uh, two wells which both took months and months more than market expectations and market hates seeing that when there's nothing no news coming through they always think it's going to be bad news it's not actually bad news i think they will now um drill and deliver gas from the wilcox uh, there's no doubt that the, the long term has been delayed a little bit uh, but pantheon is a very good company uh, you know, Jay Cheatham, the CEO, is a, is a very solid guy. The people they work for are ultra, if anything, too conservative, but I'd rather have that than the other way around. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I, I, I certainly haven't bailed out on Pantheon. It's taken longer than I thought, but I think it'll still come through. OK, that's uh, currently 57 pence a share. Um, let's uh, move on down the list. Far Limited. <clears throat> well, Far, which is quoted in, uh, in Australia, uh, is in the same consortium as uh, Cairn, uh, offshore Senegal. Um, and if you want to play that, um, 
that the far is definitely the way to play it. I, took, I, I actually took Ken out of the bucket list at the end of the year. I already have exposure to the Senegal development through FAR, which hasn't moved. Uh, but FAR, who have an ongoing dispute with uh, the partners, whether when Conoco came out of that port, um, portfolio, they actually sold it to, um, to, to one of the Australian companies, Woodside. And, uh, and, and there's no reason that that's actually been formally approved yet. Uh, now, since then, FAR have been backed by C and OOC, and CNOC is obviously a major league Chinese company, so they've got massive backing. And apart from that, the, that area in West Africa is hot. BP have, have uh, farmed in with Cosmos in Mauritania and Senegal above them. Uh, they've had action from Total. Uh, all the way down there, there's, there's big gas discoveries and big oil discoveries. Um, I wouldn't worry about FAR. It's uh, full of value. Uh, and in due course, I think we'll uh, see that coming out in the share price. Um, you, you have a good reputation of uh, picking stocks, certainly picking early stocks. And SDX is an early stock, wasn't it? It was listed last year, wasn't yeah, it? It came yeah. onto your uh, record this year in February. came into the bucket list. I've yeah. known about it since last year. I picked it up um, uh, very strongly in June of last year when uh, I first met with uh, Paul Welsh, who had... Uh, very, very strong plan for this company, and he's delivered the goods. He's, mm. he's done all the things I want to do. You know, they've had a discovery. This is Egypt, so, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, we're big discovery in, in the gas and potentially oil, maybe five kilometres up the road. Um, but the rest of it has, has done very well. They made an acquisition. They took over the, most of the assets of a company called Circle Oil. Uh, and so they've got some potentially very exciting assets which match with their own assets in Morocco. Uh, and then earlier this year they did, uh, they did a big placing which was um, more than two times oversubscribed. So they've got a really strong institutional shareholder base, um, a good following of retail holders. STX up 60 odd percent since the, uh, the year has started already. Absolutely as proud as punch that they've done so well and I expect them to continue to do well. Yeah, OK. You, you mentioned City Mokto, you mentioned uh, Morocco, and uh, the management at Jersey Oil & Gas had a record of previously being in that area, hadn't they? But Jersey Oil & Gas is a, a, a neat little stock to, to be in on at the moment. Yeah, I mean, um, the, the CEO of Jersey was the CEO of a thing called Longreach, which would which were down in Morocco. But, but now um, Jersey Oil & Gas is drilling, or will be drilling in the summer, uh, a, a big well in the North Sea called Verbier, and uh, it's you know it, this is one of those stocks that has to go into the bucket list because if this was a success, it would be huge for Jersey Oil and Gas, and even if it isn't, it'll probably run up to the well. So I've been advising investors to to take an interest and then look at it in sort of July before the well's drilled, and if, if they've gone up a lot, you could probably take a bit of money off the table. But keep an in investment in that stock because, you know, my guys at Statoil tell me this is in their top four of potential wells to drill this year. Mm -hmm. And Statoil is one of the biggest uh, in the super majors and they rate it very highly. Um, so I think that uh, Jersey is very, very interesting play. And I think it'll run up big time ahead of that drill, drilling in, which is scheduled for August. Yep. OK. Um, and finally, um, Aminex. Yes, I mean, Aminex has been a fair bit higher, but actually is still up something like 40% on the year uh, because of their discovery and the Toria too. And, and that was a difficult well to, to judge because actually um, when it came in at 17,500 scuffs, it, people thought, oh, it might have been better than that. Um, but actually it was only that amount because they'd had a big blowout of gas uh, and they'd mudded up, as they call it, and so in order not to... To, to cause a bit of grief. The company said to me that if they hadn't uh, mudded up, they'd have blown half of Tanzania to bits. Um, and so, you know, I think that uh, for the longer term, I've been waiting to put Aminex into the, the bucket list because I think this is a valuable asset. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, the management there, if they get a decent offer for the company, they would take it. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, as I was saying with Victoria and Gas, these company, the countries in in, in Africa need as much gas as they can find. So finding the gas down there is going to be very good. Uh, I'm you know, convinced that the, the management of Amnex is doing the right thing 
and very happy to keep recommending it. Mm. Of course, uh, the, the, the background to all this is, is the price of oil. Yeah. Here we are now at, what, 40 dollars $42, $45 a, yeah. a barrel, depending on whether you're looking at crude or w, uh, Brent or WTI. Um, where is this going? Because uh, it underpins the whole yeah. approach to the oil sector. It does, and it's always a short and sort of long-term situation for the oil price. Short-term, the market is concerned because the unholy alliance of America, Libya and Nigeria, who are all producing flat to the boards, and none of whom are involved in OPEC quotas, are probably producing more than the, the increase in demand. Uh, and that's offset by the OPEC and non-OPEC cuts. Ironically, the OPEC and non-OPEC cuts are, are holding tight. Um, OPEC are, are, are cutting by about 108 per cent, which is good. Non-OPEC up 100 per cent, so it's about 106 per cent. So they're cutting by more than they said. And they announced at the last meeting they were going to run it over to March. But the market wanted more than that, so they wanted a bigger cut. Um, but demand picks in, kicks in at the end of this year, uh, and as long as we don't have a continued build-up in, in stocks, uh, I think we'll be OK. You know, um, $60, which is my target, is probably a little high at the moment. I try not to change it too often, um, and um, so I'm reasonably happy. I think the action may be third or fourth quarter weighted, but I'm still con convinced that the... Uh, the oil price won't sort of fall dramatically um, and will be in reasonably good nick by the end of the year.